So just expanding on Bowlby's attachment theory. Attachment theory is important to explain the significance of the bond between a mother and child. In many instances, guys, the attachment theory describes how the child or children are attached to their mothers and the impact that it has on their development and characteristics and behavior later on in life. Conceived of four stages of attachments that begin during infancy, pre-attachment, attachment in the making, clear cut attachment, and formation of reciprocal relationships. Although all of these phases pertain to children up to the age of two only, it is important to realize how profoundly the attachment style that the child develops during this period influences their adjustment and behaviors later on. Bowlby relied on the principles of evolutionary origins and biological purposes of behavior, arguing that children are biologically predisposed to develop attachments to caregivers as the result of genetics. To a large extent, an infant's actions are designed to encourage caretakers to attach to, care for, and stay in close proximity to the child, thereby ensuring his or her well being and safety. The caretaker infant attachment is a complex process that leads to much deeper attachment. With this time that has lifelong implications and profoundly influences a person's personality and reactions to thoughts and feelings. The first of Bowlby's stage of attachments, the pre-attachment period happens between birth and six weeks. So the pre-attachment, birth to six weeks, instinctive reflexes, such as crying and cooing and mechanisms to draw the caretaker closer to the infant whose smell, voice and touch are comforting and mark the beginning of an attachment. The attachment is still fluid and the baby is still comfortable in the presence of an unfamiliar person. Attachment in the making, six weeks to eight months, now the attachment is getting stronger and the child distinguishes between fam familiar people and strangers. Those with whom he or she has strong attachments will be um, able to comfort them more by meeting the basic needs for food, shelter and comfort. Separation anxiety has not developed yet and the child does not feel anxious to become upset when a caregiver is absent. Clear cut attachment, eight months to 18 months. In this stage of attachment, separation anxiety is likely when a trusted caregiver is absent. Toddlers generally want to be with their preferred caregiver at all times, and they will follow the caretaker and do things to keep um, the caretaker's attention. The attachment continues to strengthen as the adult stays receptive to the child's needs and gives him or her attention. Formation of reciprocal attachment, 18 months to two years. During this time, the child rapidly develops language which facilitates a new understanding of the caretaker's movements and other concepts. As a result, the anxiety usually lessens, which the parent or significant, another significant adult can help manage by explaining things to the child, being present as much as possible and direct to the child. As such, this theory also explains how the insecurities and attachments of the mother, their behaviors in later adulthood. Any shortcomings is providing for a child's basic needs and will lead to negative expectations about him or herself and other people in the world, especially relating to trust and care. Along these lines, Ainsworth expanded on Bowlby. Bowlby's work and identified three primary types of attachments, and secure, avoidant, resistant, ambivalent, while his colleague Mary Main later added the fourth category known as disorganized attachment. These different forms of attachments are uh, associated with how children interact with others and respond to social situations uh, later on in life. So in summary, Bowlby's attachment theory proposed that the influence of a primary caretaker on a child's development has a profound effect on the attitudes and behavior into adult, uh, adulthood. So any questions, guys?